The first Mario Kart game that I played was Mario Kart Wii, which is why it's the best one. Something that I really enjoyed about this game is the designs of the tracks. They're so alive and detailed, I just love them. And Mario Kart 8 really stepped things up. I mean, dang, these tracks are crazy. And you know what? They're still making them. The new Booster Course Pass tracks must be just insane. If that's how they looked in the base game, imagine how nice they'll look eight years later on a new console. Okay, stop showing footage of Mario Kart 64. Show the new tracks. Okay. But where are the new tracks? You know what? Maybe it's not that bad. Let's see what the previous games looked like. Uh-oh. It appears my glasses have fallen off and I've closed my DS, as what I'm seeing right now just doesn't suffice as gameplay. Oh, no, no. That's actually the graphics. I thought it was lively. Okay, let's go even further, all the way to the beginning. Super Mario Kart for the Super Nintendo. Yeah, this looks even worse. I don't know though, Mario Kart DS looked really good when it first released. People probably thought this looked like real life. But what about the tracks specifically? Well, it's pretty hard to judge the tracks in this game. That would be like criticizing your heart surgeon because your chest hurts. Like, they did what they could here. But they definitely left room for improvement. And in 1996, Mario Kart 64 was released, and that room for improvement was still up for rent. Okay, it looks better probably. I mean, you can see now, but now I wish I couldn't. These tracks are just ugly. Some of them aren't too bad, but this is still far from ideal. There's not much in the way of interesting paths or terrain here, and virtually nothing to look at while you race. Hopefully the next game isn't whatever this is. Mario Kart Super Circuit for the Game Boy Advance. This was probably the first handheld Mario Kart game. Actually, no, it was the first handheld Mario Kart game, and it did a pretty good job at being that. It's like playing Super Mario Kart portably. And you know what? They did a pretty good job at these tracks. Now, keep in mind, I'm not so much focused on how the track plays. I'm talking about its visual quality. Video games are for looking at, not playing. The tracks in this game somehow look better than the tracks from the previous two games while being on a handheld console. But then, in 2003, something happened. Something changed for Mario Kart. Mario Kart Double Dash released for the Nintendo GameCube, and it was really good, apparently. I've never played it, and it's like a million dollars now, so I guess that ship has sailed. But I mean, wow, this game looks great. This is clearly a huge step up from everything before it. This really set the precedent for the next couple of Mario Kart games. It's how Mario Kart looks now. Well, not now now, but then now. These tracks have so much life and personality. They're so fun to race around. I bet. Like I said, I don't have the game. This is just speculation. Still though, this game is such a huge improvement. Hopefully the next game doesn't make this one look too bad. Nah, we're good. This is Mario Kart DS, and it looks bad. I mean, it doesn't look that bad when you're playing it on a little DS screen, but it looks even better when you're not playing it at all. Nah, I'm being too hard on it. It's really just unpleasant to watch on a big screen, so let's go ahead and crank up the resolution. This game's graphics lies somewhere between the N64 game and Double Dash. They aren't bad, but they still don't hold up to the console games. But there are some legendary tracks here, like Waluigi Pinball, Delfino Square, Shroom Ridge. This game's tracks are very good for the graphics that they're working with. I would actually say that these tracks are on par with those from Double Dash. In 2008, not long after the Wii's release, Miyamoto decided to make the best Mario Kart game. He called it Mario Kart Wii. He added levels and music and driving and nostalgia, and he really made this one the absolute greatest. But how do the tracks hold up? Yes, they do hold up well, goodly. This game really shows off just how good it looks with tracks like Coconut Mall, Maple Treeway, and Coconut Mall. Some people don't like how this game looks, and yeah, it's got a sort of washed out bloom to it. But the graphics aside, there are so many beautiful tracks that all feel so explorable. These worlds felt just as thought out as those in Nintendo's mainline Mario platformers, and they still totally hold up today. While some of the tracks in Double Dash do look better than some of those in Wii, the overall quality of the tracks is clearly higher in Wii, even if the game's graphics aren't as vibrant as Double Dash. This was a new level of detail and atmosphere for Mario Kart tracks that had never been seen before. Next, Mario Kart 7 happened, and then in 2014, Mario Kart 8 released for the Wii U. Okay, let's go a little deeper into Mario Kart 7 first. Mario Kart 7 was the next handheld Mario Kart game, which released for the Nintendo 3DS, and it looks pretty good. There are plenty of solid tracks here. They look about as good as the ones from Mario Kart Wii. Nothing too crazy, but they certainly don't disappoint for a handheld entry. As of now, this was the last Mario Kart game released for a handheld console. Well, the last one released for a pocket console, really? Then, all of that didn't matter at all, because oh my goodness, look at this game. I don't care what happens, I don't care how 12th place I am, because this track looks awesome. And so does this one. And so does this one. If you don't think this game looks spectacular, try opening your eyes while driving through Superbell Subway. This track has a criminal amount of detail. 
They don't all look as good as the best ones do, some have less detail to take in, but it's usually replaced by some magnificent landscape, or at least some nice colors. This game takes Mario Kart's track quality up by the same amount that Double Dash did, heck, maybe even more. So when a DLC was announced that offered 48 new courses, people said, what's the catch? To which Nintendo replied, Eight courses will be released at a time over six waves. That's 48 additional courses we plan on releasing by the end of 2023. You can enjoy this DLC at no additional cost with the Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack membership. You know what? I'll take it. More Mario Kart tracks can never be a bad thing, even if they're disappointing. No! By the time this DLC was a thing, the game had already been ported to the Switch, so these tracks weren't just for Mario Kart 8, they were for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It's, it's Deluxe because it's for the Switch. Come on, these controllers were made for drifting. Oh, it's making it worse. The Nintendo Switch is a more powerful console than the Wii U was, so these new tracks should look even better than what we've already seen from the game, but many of them just don't. I get that these are mostly just remasters of old tracks, but I would like to have seen more improvement from the base game. Specifically those from Mario Kart Tour. They look fine. Actually, they look great, but they have very stylized color schemes and textures that make these tracks not really fit in. They feel like they belong in a mobile game. You know, like Mario Kart Tour. And they looked fine in Mario Kart Tour. It just would have been nice to see them get the treatment that the original Mario Kart 8 tracks got. Just look at this sign. They couldn't even add a little text here. If this were in Super Bell Subway or even Coconut Mall on the Wii, this sign would say something. And yeah, I understand it's probably like this because it doesn't take place in the Mushroom Kingdom. It's in Berlin, so they'd have to put some kind of German that refers to real places, and maybe they don't want to do that. But I don't care, the track looks worse as a result. I can't help but feel that while this booster course pass is a really awesome thing, it's been a step backward in track quality from where we were in 2014. I mean, just look at Coconut Mall. This track looked pretty good on the Wii, but it's so much more colorful here on the Switch. Yet, at the same time, half of these stores are completely empty, the escalators are still the stupid Mario Kart 7 conveyor belts, and for a minute there, the cars in the parking lot didn't even move. I really like what they did with this track. It looks great, but it just feels unfinished. And don't take this the wrong way. The only reason that I'm pointing this stuff out is because it really sucks to see something so close to perfection miss the mark like that. I'm absolutely not talking down the quality of these tracks. They look amazing. I just played the new Merry Mountain track and it really made me realize how beautiful most of the new tracks are. I'm just a little disappointed that they don't all look the way that they could, but I guess there are some pretty lame base game tracks too, so maybe I'm wrong about all of this. But hey, maybe the next Mario Kart game will somehow be an even bigger improvement than Mario Kart 8 was. I guess we'll have to wait until Miyamoto comes out with a Nintendo Switch 2. Hopefully he makes another Mario Kart Wii game for it. Those are always so good. Anyways, I'll see you later. Thanks. This track looked pretty good on Wii, but it's so much more colorful here. Colorful, but it's so much more colorful here. But it's so much more colorful here on the Switch. But it's so much more colorful. Here.